Hi, welcome to 7 Facts, the channel where you'll get to discover little known facts about every single country on this planet. In today's episode, we'll talk about the state of Ohio as part of the series dedicated to the United States of America. But before we get into it, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel. In return, you'll get to explore the hundreds of videos that are already up, plus two brand new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Ohio wasn't an official state of the Union until 1953, but at the same time, it was the 17th state to join the United States. Let me explain. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson signed an act of Congress that approved Ohio's boundaries and constitution. However, Congress had never passed a resolution formally admitting Ohio as a state. Now, a formal resolution of admission wasn't really required in 1803, but still, they were feeling left out. The oversight was discovered only in 1953, so a bill in Congress was introduced to admit Ohio to the Union retroactive to March 1, 1803. At a special session at the old state capitol, the Ohio State Legislature approved a new petition for statehood that was delivered to Washington, D.C. on horseback. On August 7th that same year, President Eisenhower finally signed the Congressional Joint Resolution that officially declared March 1, 1803 the date of Ohio's admittance into the Union. When your river is so polluted that it actually catches on fire, you know it's bad. And that's exactly what happened to the Cuyahoga River in Ohio. The river has caught on fire at least 13 times since 1868. The pollution was so bad that at one point the river was rather oozing than flowing. Cuyahoga was filled with raw sewage, trash, debris and an almost constant film of brown and black oil. So, when a spark would fall into the water from passing by trains, the entire dam river would burn. The last time it did, in 1969, the media widely covered the incident. As a result, Congress was finally inspired to clean up the pollution, but not just in Cuyahoga, but across the entire country, and it established the Environmental Protection Agency. So, at least something good came out of this. Cleveland, Ohio may seem like a strange place for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but it makes more sense than most people probably realize. WJW Radio's disc jockey, Alan Freed, actually coined the term rock and roll on his radio show and was also instrumental in introducing a large audience to this new genre. Cleveland was also the location of Freed's Moondog Coronation Ball, the first major rock and roll concert in history. Since opening in September 1995, the Rock Hall has hosted more than 10 million visitors and had a cumulative economic impact estimated at more than $1.8 billion. Have you ever seen this picture on the internet? Well, this is an actual building and it's in the city of Newark, Ohio. It used to be the headquarters for what else but a basket company. The massive medium market basket stands 7 stories tall and covers about 17,000 square kilometers with handles that weigh more than 150 tons. Nowadays it no longer serves as the headquarters for the Longerberger company, but it continues to be a world-renowned landmark. Glaciers are a powerful force of nature, more than you know but it's not easy to see with your eyes how they shape their environment. Except in Glacier Grooves State Memorial on Kelly's Island. Here you'll find the largest easily accessible set of glacial grooves in the world. The grooves are the result of glacier movement that dates back to the Pleistocene era. They basically show how the thousands of tons of moving ice had actually grinded and smoothed out the rocky surface. 
professional baseball was born in Cincinnati. Prior to 1869, baseball was mostly a game for amateurs. There were a handful of men who made a living playing the sport, but for the most part it was strictly a fun side gig. Then the 1969 Cincinnati Red Stockings came along with their all-star starting lineup, meaning all nine men were paid professionals, and their expertise certainly showed. The team embarked upon a road trip later that year, where they played against any town willing to put a team together. The Red Stockings won all 57 games. Police cars are today a natural part of our urban landscapes, but they had to come from somewhere, right? Well, the first police car in history was deployed in Akron, Ohio in 1899, and it was an electric car at that. This patrol wagon could travel 48 kilometers on one charge, which is not bad for an electric vehicle from over 118 years ago. Its top speed was a dizzying 30 km per hour. And its first assignment? To pick up a drunk guy, of course. So these were 7 facts about Ohio. I hope you enjoyed the video and will leave a like and subscribe. Share your thoughts and comments downstairs and do check me out on Facebook or Twitter. You can offer your support even more by visiting my Patreon page and becoming a patron. I hope to see you next time, bye.